Okay, um, my next victim, Philip Lowe. So, uh, the Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness, the US launch. You better start from the very beginning here and explain to us what this is. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you to all of you for being here today. Thank you for the organizers for a wonderful meeting. Um, three years ago, uh, I rallied some of the top neuroscientists in the world and put them in a room in Cambridge. This was for the Francis Crick Memorial Conference. And the question was very simple. Is there any neurobiological evidence to sustain the idea that humans are the only conscious beings? Uh, before Francis Crick died, he had asked me this question. I had discovered that um, zebra finches have REM sleep. And he said, you know, what does a bird's ability to produce consciousness, uh, what, what does a bird's ability to produce REM tell us about consciousness? So I thought the best approach to answer Francis's greater, greater question was to have a real meeting. And what we did there, instead of agonizing over the meaning of consciousness, which um, many people do, and uh, Francis used to tell me this was sort of a pitiful exercise. He said people had tried the same thing about defining the meaning of life before DNA was discovered. And he would tell me, he, as a, when I was a grad student, he said, Philip, consciousness is like porn. We'll recognize it when we see it. <laughs> so, um, so, the, so the question um, was not to define sort of neural porn uh, in um, Cambridge, but to see if animals could pass a neural Turing test. And the idea, therefore, was the following. If we make a, a, this exaggerated assumption that uh, the brain is akin to a computer, which is a false assumption. Mm. When uh, the telephone was the neck plus ultra, we thought the brain was like a telephone. In 20 years, we might think it's like, it is like a hologram. But the question is, if we make that assumption and, and, and we view consciousness as a program, if we look at all these other brains from other animals, what is there structurally that would enable them to run the same program? Or put differently, what neurophysiological signal or pathway uh, or gene is present in humans and absent in other species that would enable us to be the only anointed ones to have consciousness and deprive the other ones uh, from that experience. And the data overwhelmingly showed that in fact there was a continuum uh, across um, these non-human brains. So there is nothing unique Genetically to humans. Genetically, of course. Yeah, well, but, it is, but, 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 but when it comes to, to the, the expression of these genes on the brain yeah. producing particular structures or signals that would differentiate us from everybody else, there isn't. Uh, and that was the big take home message from Cambridge. Um, the neocortex, it turns out, is at best sufficient but not necessary for the production of many um, uh, brain patterns. Uh, birds, which uh, do not have a neocortex, uh, are able to produce REM sleep. They're able to recognize themselves in the mirror, even though they lack von Economo neurons, which were believed to be the essential neurons responsible for that. So basically, there isn't a single thing that is unique to us uh, that uh, we should um, think of as the NCC, the Neural Coil of Consciousness. And therefore, uh, we, we thought it was high time to repudiate this Cartesian notion uh, that we were the only ones with consciousness, for Descartes thought we were the only ones with a soul, but this was sort of modern, uh, modern parlance for the same word. Um, and we put all this in, in the document. I have the original here with all the signatures. Um, and that led to sort of an awakening, um, not only the new biological community, but the world. So the idea, it, when you make these distinctions and the neurobiological community will obviously know much better than us here in this room, but I mean, the, the, we're not just going down through mammals, we're going down a long way down, I say down, uh, <laughs> to, 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 to across other species to, I don't know, uh, fish. I mean, I don't know how far down we're going, right? That's a great question. And so we had to be very careful about this. And we decided that we would only talk about things we know of, which is, I know it's... Uh, 
it's a very strange uh, concept. Um, well, so me. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about all of those things I don't know about. Well, as long as you ask questions, that's, yeah. that's fine. So, so, um, so we didn't have data on fish. And some people were quite upset with us that we didn't include fish formally in the declaration. Uh, you know, they said that they have pain receptors. But just because they have pain receptors doesn't necessarily mean that they have pain. Um, but we had data on the octopus. Uh, and we did go as far down or sideways as the octopus. The octopus is able to abstract. Um, we had data on, on mammals. We had data on birds. And we left the door open for, for other species, provided that there is data. So is there an implication here? I mean, obviously, you're making, a, I suppose, a fundamentally a philosophical or scientific declaration. But is there a, an implicit bill of rights for animals being kind of drawn up as we speak that's going to kind of pass this by? That, that is a very interesting uh, question uh, also. So as a neuroscientist, I believe that my core responsibility is to produce the data. But as a technologist, uh, I believe that I have a responsibility to follow my work into the world and make sure it is used properly. And therefore, I don't think that this declaration should be, hi should be hijacked by any party. Um, and I had a conversation about this with a state Supreme Court justice at the MacArthur Foundation. And he, when he saw this document, he said, I want a copy of this for every single audience member. And I looked at him and I said, with all due respect, Your Honor, um, you know, humans will still love their steaks. And he said, uh, with all due respect, Dr. Lowe, uh, there used to be a time when humans loved their slaves too. And he said, you have to understand that the United States Constitution was not written by humans for humans. And at that point, I thought that perhaps um, his tolerance for scotch was not as high as, as mine. <laughs> uh, and, and so I looked at him, and, and, and I said, well, who, who wrote it? He, he said, it was written by people for people. And there's a very big distinction here because um, we care about abortion in the third trimester in this country because we assume that this unborn fetus has the capability to produce consciousness. If you are telling us that these adult mammals and birds uh, have a greater complexity, then under the United States Constitution, they may actually be people. And he told me this a few years ago. This document was signed three years ago. Since then, uh, India has recognized dolphins as non-human people. It is now forbidden to kidnap dolphins and put them in a dolphinarium. In fact, uh, one should not even interfere with their culture. Uh, in Colombia, um, circuses have been given two years to stop using um, wild animals. Uh, in New Zealand, um, there was a ban on, on, on cosmetic testing. Um, and um, certain animals have been recognized as non-human people. Uh, certainly, there is a trend there. Um, we produce, apparently, well, we, by the same time tomorrow, there will be 200 million sentient beings that uh, will no longer be sentient. So we, we kill, um, on a yearly basis, um, when I mean we, it is the meat, the dairy, and the egg industry, 70 billion animals. That's, that's an astonishing number. Brazil alone kills 5.5. 5. To give you a reference, uh, the, the uh, scientific industry will kill 200 million vertebrates per year, not per day. So to the extent that we are converting sentient beings into meat or into leather, we may want to rethink uh, about not only the, the cost to our planet, because there's a huge carbon footprint associated with that, um, but also the ethical cost. What does it say about us? There are obviously, I can imagine, I know, uh, a whole range of people who've been talking and taking part in this conference who um, will no doubt have a, uh, a stake, if I can use that term, in this, in this conversation. The, um, are you, with regard to then, I mean, this is the US launch, right? What, what exactly does that mean? Is this an ongoing scientific project, or is this a, essentially a campaign? Uh, this is consciousness raising. That's a good, good distinction. It doesn't have to be. So, so it is a conclusion that is being shared with the public. Um, a campaign 
uh, seems to suggest an agenda. There's no agenda here. This is sort of liberating data and making it available to the public. Um, now, the Brazilians jumped on this three years ago. I had just given a small talk about this at NASA. And then uh, Veja told me that 10 million people had actually read the article uh, that, uh, that uh, mentioned this. Uh, the New York Times covered it in passing uh, a year ago, but there was no formal sort of launch. And so we're delighted that you're taking the time to, to uh, instruct uh, the public and ask uh, religious questions about it. Mm. But is the, is the scientific research also ongoing in terms of how far and how extensive well, we're going to get down to kind of, you know, unicellular organisms as well? I mean, do you know what I mean? Are, are we actually trying to extend and examine the, the position of fish, for example, in paying? Is that, is that Some people ongoing? are. Some yeah. people are. Yeah. Some people are. Um, the, but let me give you a few examples. Um, so if you, if you mark a dolphin uh, and train it, uh, so the dolphin will, go to, will swim to a mirror and will look at himself and recognize the mark. Now, if you pull a prank on the dolphin and you mark him with, with paint that, it, that is actually not visible, so he has the, had the experience of the marking. Now he's going to swim there, and he's going to gesticulate in very abnormal ways to look for that particular mark. There is an awareness there. Um, there was a, a, a very interesting study that was also done on, in rodents. It turns out that if you, if you um, tickle them, they laugh. <laughs> and what I mean by that is uh, they produce shrieks at very high frequencies that we have to transduce to lower frequencies in order to, to, to make them audible. And it's not pain, because the areas of the brain that are associated with, with that experience don't correspond to pain areas. And, it, and in fact, uh, if you move your hand, the, the rat will actually look for that experience. So, and there are plenty of examples, and all of that is available on the, the Francis Crick Memorial website, which is being uh, uh, updated right now. Uh, the, the point is, if you look at the behavior, if you look at the, 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 the brain signals, for example, K-complexes, were believed to originate from thalamocortical loops. Uh, I found those in birds, you know, without, without a cortex. Um, there, there is a very famous example of this bird, uh, Alex, a parrot, uh, that uh, was just a random bird that was uh, uh, bought from a, a pet store. Um, and Alex was able, for example, to recognize sort of green and blue cars and cubes, and if you actually presented him uh, with a new set of, of, of cars and cubes that were, some of them were blue, some of them were, were green, and you asked Alex, you know, how many blue cubes uh, are there? He couldn't count all of the cubes because some of them were green. Uh, he couldn't uh, uh, count everything uh, that was blue because there were also cars, and so he had actually to count the blue cubes, and he would give you an answer. So it, our, our naivete, is very much due to our obsession with ourselves. And what is happening now in neuroscience is akin to what happened in astronomy. You know? so, so we've been in the pre-Copernican pre era for a very long time. And the Cambridge Declaration is a new chart. It is a new map. Uh, I don't think that Copernicus had an agenda. Uh, you know, the data is the data. And what we thought about our place in the world is just bullshit. I think we better leave it there. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.